This week's Torah portion is Shemini. I'm looking forward to hearing Dylan and Claire's viewpoints on the Torah portion tomorrow. But for now, I would like to focus on a section of the portion that is certainly intriguing to me. Food. In Shemini, God tells Moses and his brother Aaron which foods are permitted for eating and which are forbidden to the people of Israel. The brothers are then to instruct the Israelites about these foods, teaching them to eat only what is clean, that they might be holy before God. I find the idea of being thoughtful about our food really interesting. I love food, all different cuisines. I love eating it, cooking it, serving it to my family and friends. And you can learn some blessings over food if you come to my workshop this Sunday at 9.30 a.m. <laughs> entitled Shalom in the Home, an introduction to Shabbat rituals with Cantor Lindsay. You can always come and see me after the service for more information. So in Shemini, we learn about forbidden foods, including different seafoods, such as shellfish and shark, various birds, including ravens, seagulls, and hawks, all anim animals that walk on paws, as well as the uh, forbidden pork and the separation of meat and milk. Why do you think these foods are forbidden? Anyone want to offer up any ideas? Oh, yes, Hannah. Just a guess. Because they everything, some things really are extra special, so they're like, don't eat Oh, that's interesting. So you think that the things that they don't want us to eat are actually extra special things? Very interesting. I, I've never, that's a new interpretation. I like that one. That's very interesting. <laughs> Any other thoughts on why there are foods that are in Jewry are considered forbidden? I got my ideas and I'm going to present them, but I would love to hear yours. Sandy, yes. Some of them would kill you. Some of them might be, uh, would kill you, might be bad for you. Definitely, yes. But dangerous. Dangerous is a great word. Any other thoughts? Okay, well. There are lots of different commentators who have lots of different ideas. So, some commentators believe it is a matter of health. Commentator and physician Moses Maimonides believed that food is forbidden by the laws of Torah that is unfit for human consumption. He believed that our Torah, our spiritual and moral guide, separates us from harmful factors. So this is a common sense reason for the Torah's dietary prohibitions. Other commentators believed that the kashrut laws in the Torah aim to protect our spiritual health, believing that forbidden foods poison the pure and intellectual soul, bringing spiritual doom to those who consume them. Contemporary rabbi David Blumenthal believes that keeping kosher is a way of preparing oneself to receive the word of God. It is a way of cultivating the bodily habits that will make one a fit receptacle for the divine presence. In other words, observing the dietary laws draws us toward all the laws of Torah, as well as the spiritual message of Judaism. I really like that interpretation. Now, as Reformed Jews, we believe in informed choice. We learn about our traditions so that we may make choices for ourselves and for our families. But this can lead us to create diets that vary wildly from Jew to Jew. When I went to my first year of seminary at HUC in Jerusalem, Keeping kosher was built into the society. Pretty much every restaurant was kosher, with literally only about five or six non-kosher restaurants in Jerusalem, which stayed open on Shabbat. So many of my classmates who kept kosher were thrilled at the ease of living in Jerusalem. Yet some of my classmates didn't keep kosher at all and ate whatever they wanted, although it was difficult to find treif in Jerusalem. And some classmates had their own interpretations, such as, eating meat and milk and shellfish, but never eating pork, because pork just seemed too goyish. As for myself, I grew up conservative, with a very traditional mom and a more secular dad, and we ate all foods. I didn't really begin to be very thoughtful about kashrut until I met my husband, David. He grew up eating kosher at home with separate plates for meat and milk. It was different for me to bring a new tradition into my home life. Now it's second nature to me and my family. We have separate dishes, separate sponges, and we only buy kosher meat. To me, it's how I elevate my home life, 
bringing holiness and intentionality to the meals we eat at our dinner table. I may be a little more lenient outside of the house, but at home, I honor God by having a kosher home and celebrating Shabbat, incorporating traditions that draw me closer to my family and to my ancestors. It states at the end of this week's Parsha, you shall not make yourselves unclean by eating these things, for I, the Lord, am your God. You shall sanctify yourselves and be holy, for I am holy. For I, the Lord God, who brought you up from the land of Egypt to be your God, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Some final food for thought. Ha ha. When we are thoughtful about what we eat, we too can find holiness and draw closer to God. May we all seek out holiness in ourselves and in one another. Shabbat shalom. And on the theme of holiness, we have our Kol Ruach Junior Choir, who will help lead us in a song about finding holiness all around us. So this is entitled, Holy Holiness. And all you have to do is repeat after me. All around, all around everywhere, everywhere, all Thank you so much, Cole Rock. Such beautiful singing this evening.